Have you ever had the feeling that you knew what someone was going to say just before he said it? Or have you ever walked into a strange room and had the sensation that you'd been there before? Well, if you have, you've taken a small step beyond. Now watch a giant step. A tombstone cutter deals in logic. Every man has a birth date, and every man has a death date. And it's the function of the stone cutter to engrave these vital statistics in their natural order. Now, this seems so self-evident that it needn't even be discussed. I urge you, remember this stone cutter. All right, that's water over the dam. Get rid of Jameson. Never mind about his contract. He's got a price. Pay it and drop it. Now, look, you're going to have to handle that Houston business yourself. I'm flying to Tulsa in an hour and I won't be back until late tonight. Tony, Tony! Now, look, tomorrow won't be any good either. I'm tied up all day. All right, then. Will you get it settled and check with me? All right, Tony, all right. That's enough, that's enough. What are you trying to do? Kill me? Oh. Yeah, this is for you. So? Well, it might be important. They're all important, Rita. What are you telling me? Oh! This is one I never heard of. Kassanek Village, Maine. Give me that. You even got business up there? Except once every six months, he sends a card wanting to know when I'm coming back for a visit. When do I ever get time to visit anybody? He lives there, I live here. I send him checks, he sends them back. Now this. I'm dying, come tomorrow. Maine's a long way. You're gonna fly? Done. Well, how are you, boy? Didn't expect you for a couple of hours yet. What the devil do you think you're doing up there? What the devil does it look like? I was fixing to finish this off, but seeing how you brought visitors, I reckon I'd best come down for a, for a little handshake and welcome to you. Name's Lockhart. Uh, I'm Dr. Halsey, your son's physician. And this is Dr. Simmons sitting with me. Oh, how do you do, Doctor? Now, just exactly what's going on here? Well, no, it's right good to see you, Stan. Look, what kind of a joke is this supposed to be? You scare me into getting a doctor and flying 3,000 miles because you're supposed to be dying today and look at you. He's young yet, boy. What are you talking about? Up on a ladder painting a house? And you there, telling me tomorrow it'd be too late. I reckon it will be. Well, uh, have you made a diagnosis, Doctor? You could call it that. Dying up on a ladder painting a house. I don't know of any plan that a man has to has to lie down to die. I was sort of planning on, on visiting with you, not arguing. Ain't much time left for arguing, you know. Oh, Pop, what do you want to talk like that for? What do you want to try to scare me with a trick like this for? Oh, are you sick? Are you feeling bad? No, never felt better in my life, as a matter of fact. Examine him. Take him in the house and examine him. And if I find that this is just an idea of yours, they try to get me here. I'm no call for so much shouting, boy. Don't remember how you used to be so much of a shouter. You used to be more quiet like. Look, I didn't come here to discuss. Give him a thorough physical. Do I have permission to examine your patient, Doctor? Oh, go ahead. Make you feel better than if I just tell you what I found. Mr. Lockhart? Sure, sure. And get the other side of this finished today. Even with time off, I reckon. Now, suppose you tell me what this is all about. I want to know everything. 
I never lied to a patient or his folks yet, Stan. It, 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 it's right good you got here for his last day. Well? Well, his heart's about as good as yours or mine. Blood pressure's probably lower than yours is at the moment. His muscle tone is extraordinary for a man of his years. Reflex is normal, kidney... In other words, there's nothing wrong with him. Well, Doctor, have I overlooked something that you found? Not in there. All right, I've had enough. I suppose you tell me what makes you or him think that he's going to die today. No. Don't tell him, Doc. Joe. Maybe I ain't seen this son of mine for under 15 years. But I'll wager he ain't changed that much. Talking about something never proved nothing to Stan. He's got to be show. Show me what, Pop? What are you talking about? Doc will show you, and then you'll know. And then maybe we can quit this arguing and have that little visit together. Go on, Doc. Take it there. There ain't much time left. But I've never seen anything as ridiculous no, in my life. Pop, come back! Will you come back wait here? Wait a minute. Like you said, there's no use arguing. We'll take a little walk, and I'll, uh, I'll show you the reason he's going to die today. The thing he wants you to see is right here. And it's old Menzies' place. Oh, you remember Menzies, hmm? He's still carving gravestones for everybody in town before they die? That's right. And the old ghoul used to give me the creeps when I was a kid. Having those stones all ready and waiting for the final date. Still doing it. He, uh, he carved a stone for your pa, Stan. Finished it, uh, oh, five, six years ago. Over there. All right, so he carved the stone. Your paw stone is different from the other, Stan. Come on, look. Like I said, your uh, paw stone is different from the others. Five years ago, when it was carved, Menzies put in two dates. Birth and death. Born July 10th, 1883, and died September 7th, 1957. Businessman like you must keep dates in his mind pretty good. Today is September 7th, 1957. All right, Doc. The joke over now? Well, listen, Stan. Never mind. I know what you're going to say. I remember some years ago, Menzies put a death date on a man's stone before he died, and the old geezer died on that day. And everybody talked about it for a whole year. But that was a coincidence, and you know it. A year or two after you left here, Menzies did it again. A woman. Oh, she'd been ailing for a spell. But she died on the day Menzies carved on her stone. So he traded one lucky guest to give some old poor sick soul a push on the way out. Now, what's the matter with you, Doc? You're a medical man, a scientist. You know about suggestion, psychosomatic suggestion. Two years ago, it happened a third time. A baby. Menzies carved the stone the day it was born. Birth and death date. For about a year later. Father got so mad, he came up here with a sledgehammer and busted the stone into a hundred pieces. Menzies said that wouldn't make no difference. And it didn't either. And you wonder why I never came back here for a visit. The whole town, even you. Living a hundred years back in stupidity and superstition. Letting an old crank lead you by the nose. Even though the place he's leading you to is your own grave. My name's Lockhart. Sorry about your power, Mr. Lockhart. Got a phone here? I am. You get in there and call my father and you tell him this thing is a fraud. Ain't no fraud. Get on that phone. Can't stop death with a phone call. All right, what do you want? Well, it'll do for a start. How much money do you want to call up this ridiculous act of yours? I carve the truth when I know it, Mr. Lockhart. 
I don't like it none. Your pa is a good man. I'll give you $500. Take it and break up that stone and call my father and tell him the joke's over. Maybe you think you can buy yourself a lie with money, Mr. Lockhart. But it ain't going to change the truth. Go back home, Stan. Spend some time with your pa while there's still time. Lockhart. My father in there? Yeah, he came in about ten minutes ago. No, no, wait. Before you go in there. What's the matter? Well, he came back about ten minutes ago, as I said. And he looked rather ill, so I, I gave him another checkup. And, uh, well, I just don't know how to explain this, but th there's been a definite change. His heart is erratic, his pulse is weakened. I, there's nothing definite, but I... Up. Just rest in a mate. Doc, take you over to Menzies to see the stone, eh? Pop, how much of a fool do you have to be? What's the matter with you? So a guy puts a couple of dates on a stone. Now that doesn't mean a blasted thing. Still shouting, boy. Seems like you do a powerful lot of shouting. Right, will you listen? Will you listen to me instead of some of these half-cracked characters around here? Now you're not gonna die because some crank puts a couple of letters on a stone. Those other things, call them coincidence, call them suggestion, they don't mean a thing. What's all this you do back where you work, boy? It keeps you so busy. We got a short time to catch up on a long while. Now, Pop, we've got all the time in the world. If you're just making money, I guess, judging by that fancy doctor and them checks you send me every month. I can afford to send checks to a man who sends them back uncashed. Made you mad, didn't it, by doing that, eh? Well, they were for you. No, not for me. More for you. You got a name for it here. Conscience money. I don't want you having me on your conscience, boy. Now look, Bob. Let's get this straight. I don't have anything on my conscience. Now maybe you have. Maybe that's why you think you're dying, because somebody says today is your day. But I don't. I always kept thinking you'd come back, Stan. Before now, I mean. Figured we'd get a weekend in fishing up at the range, please. Now look, Pop, we've got more important things to talk about than the fact that I didn't come back here and fish and you got a grudge. I ain't got a grudge, boy. No. Well, you used to cash the checks. You used to cash them all up until that Christmas when I said I was coming back for the holidays. And then just because something came up and I couldn't make it, you started sending them back. And you don't call that a grudge. It wasn't. After that Christmas, I didn't need the money no more. Why not? I quit buying the things I needed it for. What are you talking about? I'm sure, yeah. Remember that Christmas? You was about ten. Your ma was still alive then. You wanted a fishing rod, a good one. If he didn't have money for no store rods, I made you one. He didn't say much, but we knew. Boy, Ten, he wants what he wants. That Christmas, I reckon you are coming back for a visit. I, I bought a rod. Got all kinds of stuff here. The gun you wanted when you was twelve. Field glasses, that must have been the next year. Camera, wristwatch. It isn't easy for a man to forget the things his kid wants, that he can't get them. You mean you spent all this money I sent you for things to buy me? I had to use yours. Never could do it on my own. I wouldn't have told you, except that you'd probably be wondering after I was gone. And you cleaning up things and found this stuff. I think maybe I'd best go sit down a while. Yeah, boy.
September too late to go fishing in the range, Lise? Yeah, September's too late. Then we'll do it this spring. Or maybe you can come west with me. Or if you can't do that, then I can come up here weekends and we'll go in the spring. I mean it, Pop. I know you do, boy. Remember that horse we had, Pop? Remember how you told me to water him every morning and every night and how I forgot? And one day how he died? Yeah. Didn't catch up here till he'd gone three miles down the road, running away. And that horse cost $25. All the money in the world, then. Dead. And you didn't say a word. Except, hot out today, son. Let's go back. Seems like I'm always in the same rut. Always wanting to get you to go home. I'm home now, Pop. I'm home. I wanted to come home before, but well, every time I said I was busy, it was just because I... Because you were running away from home again. Isn't that what the Lockhart kid always did when things went wrong? One thing about you, boy. Maybe you're wrong, but you always tell the truth after. No way you run. I want to show you something. Oh. I was just talking to him and... Cardiac seizure. But I, I can't understand it. His heart was in fine condition this morning. It still is. He's going to be all right. Just save him. I'll do what I can, Mr. Lockhart. But he's dying. That should ease the pain. I've given him some morphine and a stimulant. Pop, please. See, I'm not shouting. I'm not shouting, but listen to me. We've wasted so much time already. There's so many things for us to do together. Doc Simmons told me about that headstone. And uh, I keep telling myself, why, this is United States, 1957. It's not, not Haiti, not the jungle, we're here. It had nothing to do with a headstone, it was his heart. Yeah, I keep telling myself that too. But his heart was okay this morning, he was in fine condition. Other people in good condition have been hit with a heart attack too. Well, I know that. Tell me something now. Those th those three cases, uh, they they weren't substantiated, were they? Well, I mean, uh, now now if they were, if 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 this man could really call these names, why there'd been some publicity about it. The newspapers would have carried the story. I can see you don't know much about towns like this, Halsey. Even if Menzies did what they said and brought the dead back for an encore, nobody outside this town would ever know about it. They guard their town and their secrets as if it were pure gold. Why, well, then, you think those three cases were authentic? I think it's time you stopped asking questions and started doing what I paid you to come here to do. Now get in there and help him. Five hundred, a thousand, two thousand. Makes no difference what kind of money you talk about. You can't take it. Not right. You're a fine one to talk about what's right. You think it's right to kill a man? No blood on my hands, mister. What difference does it make you how you kill him? Your ideas or your hands? It's still murder. Look, please listen to me. What do you want? Well, if it's not money, what do you want? What I mostly want is not to be able to do this. I don't like it, none. Your power's a good man. I don't like doing what I do. Then why do you do it? Seems like I can't not. Names, dates, I carve them. When it tells me to put something extra, 
I gotta do it, that's all. Go on home to your pa, mister. You can't do him no good here. You murdering devil, you! Get out! Get out! Get out! Get out. What for? So you can go on with your killing? You can write somebody else's death sentence? Huh? Get out! Please. Listen to me, please, please. My father's dying. Look, I just want to go home and tell him there's no stone, there's a mistake. Please, listen. I said get her! All right. I'll go now. But I'll be back with someone to stop you. I'll be back. I'll get be out. back. I'll be back. Get I'll out. be back! I can't do that, Stan. I know how you feel, but I can't do that. Why can't you? It's murder, isn't it? Why can't you do your job and close up Menzies' place and throw him in jail where he belongs? Why can't you do your job? My job is law, Stan, not persecution. Now you sit there and talk to me about persecution. Who's persecuting who? What about Menzies? Can't you understand, Sheriff, my father's dying? What does it take to get a town to do something about this? What does it take to stop a man like Menzies? Tell me what I can do. What anyone can do and stay inside the law and I'll do it. If I can't throw a man in jail for carving a date on a stone, if I could, it would do no good anyhow. What are you all, dead in this town? Is that why you don't care if a man killed because you're dead anyway? Standing there, letting a thing like this happen? How can we stop it? You tell me that. The father of that baby that got burned, he felt like you did. He came in here like you now, shouting at me to, to lock up Menzies. But I couldn't. Then he went out to the stone yard and smashed his baby's tombstone to bits. It didn't change a thing. The people of this town don't like this any more than you do. But what are we supposed to do? I don't care what you do. Just do something. Stop him. Stop him? Stop him from what? That stone was carved five years ago. Carved and finished. You want me to beg, don't you? Just like everybody else in this sick town, you want to cut me down to size and make me beg, huh? All right, I'm begging. Just stop him, will you? Arrest him, run him out of town, do anything, please, but just stop him, will you? I've wasted a lot of time. My pup and I would. We've got so many things to do together. We, we just have so many things to do together. Sheriff Allen speaking. I asked Doc. I uh, came in a while ago. I'll tell him. Look, just get Menzies to come with me to Pops, will you? Now, that's not breaking a law, is it? Huh? Just get him to say it was a mistake? Stan, that was Doc Simmons called. Sorry, Stan. Your pa's gone. Stan, you want I should come home with you? My car's right outside. Stan, let me come with you and I'll... My father's dead. I figured. Son of Simon Lockhart, born September 18, 1921, died December 14, 1958. Died, executed by the state on that day for the murder of Peter Menzies, stonecutter. 